Yo, you've got the Flipper Zero and maybe you've even picked up the Wi-Fi dev board, but what do you actually do with it? If you just plug it in, not much happens and it can feel like you got an accessory that isn't pulling its weight. Well, what if you could use it to actually connect your Flipper to the internet? In the next few minutes, we're going to make that happen. You might have heard about different firmware you can flash on this board, well forget the noise. If you want to give your flipper the ability to talk to online services, you need a firmware called Flipper HTTP. I'm Jay Blanks and today I'm going to show you the updated 2025 method to flash this onto your dev board. Then you can finally use your flipper to connect to the web. So let's get it done. So what's the big deal with Flipper HTTP? Well, simply put, it's a software library that you flash onto the ESP32 chip, which is the brain of your Wi-Fi developer board, and it allows your Flipper to send and receive data over the internet. The stock firmware on the board is mainly for debugging, which is great for developers, but not really for the rest of us. We want to connect to things and that's what Flipper HTTP is for. Now, flashing Flipper HTTP unlocks a whole new category of apps that need an internet connection. This isn't about browsing websites on your Flipper's tiny screen. It's about letting your Flipper make HTTP requests the same way your web browser loads a website. And this allows it to interact with APIs, control smart home devices through webhooks, or pull in live data. Now imagine your flipper fetching the current weather, checking stock prices, or posting a message to a Discord server. There are apps that use Flipper HTTP to create a social network just for Flipper users, or even an app store that runs directly on your device, letting you download new apps without a computer. You could even set it up to trigger an action in your smart home, turning your Flipper into a remote control for your lights. Now, Flipper HTTP is focused on internet connectivity. It's what turns your flipper from a standalone gadget into a device that can talk to the entire digital world. Basically, flashing flipper HTTP gives your flipper a voice to speak to the internet. It's a specialized tool for anyone curious about IoT, automation, and API integration. Okay, before we start, let's get our gear together. The 2025 method is streamlined and mostly happens on the flipper itself, but we need a few things. Okay, first, the hardware. You need your flipper zero, you need the official Wi-Fi dev board, and you need a data capable USB-C cable. We'll need the cable to transfer some files, but the actual flashing will be done without your computer. Second, the software and firmware. On your computer, you'll need the official QFlipper desktop application. Now, this is how we'll get the files onto your Flipper's SD card. Next, head to the Flipper HTTP GitHub page. I'll have it linked below. And we need to download three specific files from the Wi-Fi developer board folder. The first one is Flipper HTTP bootloader.bin. Next is Flipper HTTP partitions.bin and lastly Flipper HTTP firmware A.bin. These are the essential pieces of the firmware we're about to flash. And finally, on your Flipper Zero, we'll need two apps from the Flipper App Lab. The first is called ESP Flasher, which is the tool we we'll use to do the flashing. And the second is the brand new Flipper HTTP companion app that lets you manage your internet connection after everything is set up. Go ahead and install both of these before moving on. And that's it, your Flipper, Wi-Fi dev board, USB-C cable that supports data, QFlipper, three bin files, and two Flipper apps. All right, this is where it all comes together. First, let's get the firmware files onto your Flipper. So disconnect the Wi-Fi dev board for now. 
and then plug your Flipper Zero into your computer and open the Q Flipper application. Now we're going to click on the file manager icon and navigate to SD card, apps data, and then click ESP flasher. Now, if that ESP flasher folder doesn't exist, you can create it yourself or open up the ESP flasher app once. After that, you need to drag the dot bin files you downloaded earlier right into this folder. Once the transfer is complete, you can disconnect your flipper from the computer. Next up, it's flashing time. With your flipper off, connect your Wi-Fi dev board to the GPIO pins on top of your flipper. Now, as a pro tip, you can actually turn your flipper on first. And then if you press and hold the boot button on the dev board while you plug it into your flipper, you can skip a few steps later on. And now on your flipper, hit the center button and then go to apps and then scroll down and click the GPIO folder so we can launch the ESP flasher app inside. Now inside the app, you'll see a few options. You can ignore reset board and enter bootloader if you did the boot button trick I showed you earlier. If not, just press reset board, wait a few seconds and go back and then click into bootloader and wait for the waiting for download message to appear on screen before going back. Then after that, go up and click on manual flash or if you don't see that, click on flash ESP instead. This brings you to the file selection screen. It's simple, just match the files to the slots. So scroll down and click bootloader and then choose the flipper HTTP bootloader.bin. For part table, click the flipper HTTP partitions. And for firmware A, click on flipper HTTP firmware A. And with all three files assigned, scroll down and click flash fast. And you'll see the flipper starts working. Now the process is quick and it usually takes just about 30 seconds or so. And success is confirmed when the little LED on the dev board flashes green three times. So now that it's complete, all we have to do is click the reset button, which is the left button, and we will see it flash green three times. And that's it, the flashing is complete. You've done the heavy lifting, now for the moment of truth. Let's make sure it all works. Your freshly flashed Wi-Fi dev board should still be connected to your flipper's GPIO pins. Make sure it's seated firmly and all the pins are lined up correctly. Now navigate to the applications menu again on your flipper, go to the GPIO folder, and then scroll down to find the new Flipper HTTP companion app, which should just be named Flipper HTTP. Go ahead and launch it. This app is your new Wi-Fi control center. Before we click run, scroll down and click settings. Now we need to fill in our Wi-Fi SSID and Wi-Fi password. The username and user password fields are used in a few of the Flipper HTTP apps. So make sure to create a unique username that stands out and is rememberable. After that, click back, go up and click run. And now we can either click connect right away or scan to see if our network is available. To confirm it's all working, you can open another Flipper HTTP app like Flip Social app and see if it successfully pulls live data from the internet by viewing the feed. So click run, click on feed, and if you see something here, it worked. You've successfully flashed your Wi-Fi dev board, connected your flipper to the internet, and you're on Flip Social. Even with a streamlined process, things can go wrong. If you hit a snag, don't worry. It's usually a warning or an easy fix. First, some common harmless warnings. 
If you see a fail to deserialize JSON from settings file message, you can safely ignore it. This just means you haven't saved any Wi-Fi credentials yet, so the board gives a warning when it tries to read a file that doesn't exist. And if you see a mount failed error, this message is usually just a temporary issue that can be solved by disconnecting and reconnecting your dev board. Now, if you see a missing credentials warning inside of an app, but your credentials are entered, that means one of your Flipper HTTP apps are out of date. Now, for a while, the official app catalog hasn't been updated. So as you see, I submitted the updated version on October the 16th, and today is November 26th. So it's been just about six or seven weeks. So to fix this, you need to grab the latest versions directly from my website at www.jblank.com slash flipper slash download. This downloads the repository from GitHub, uses UFBT to compile the app, and then returns the app as a download. So what if the ESP Flasher app can't find the firmware files? Well, if the .bins files don't show up for your selection, then they're in the wrong folder. Just reconnect your flipper to your computer, open QFlipper, and double check that these three files are placed directly inside the SD card slash apps data slash ESP Flasher. Now the folder names must be exact. Now another common issue, the flash succeeds, but apps can't detect the board. Now, one of the frequent causes for this is you need to click the reset button on your dev board after flashing. And if you did that, just check that the board is pushed all the way down onto the pins. And one last reminder, the ESP32 chip in the official dev board only supports 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. It will not see or connect to five gigahertz networks. This isn't a bug, it's a hardware limitation of the board. Flipper HTTP does support five gigahertz, but you either need the BW16 or the ESP32C5. Now, if this guide helped get your Wi-Fi developer board connected to the internet, do me a quick favor and hit that thumbs up button. It's free and it really helps the channel out. And if you're into Flipper Zero content or you want to learn more about the upcoming Flipper One, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. And now I want to hear from you. What's the first thing you're going to try with Flipper HTTP? Are you going to check the weather, hop on Flip Social, check stock prices, or download an app from the App Store? Drop a comment below. And if you run into any other issues, you can post them too. And there you have it. That Wi-Fi dev board that was just sitting there collecting dust is now a powerful sidekick to your Flipper Zero. You've broken past the stock limitations and are now ready to connect your Flipper to the online world. Today was all about getting the foundation right, flashing the firmware and getting connected. But this is really just the beginning. The Flipper HTTP ecosystem is packed with creative apps from a social media client to 3D open world games. You've got the tool, now it's time to have some fun with it. I'm Jay Blaint, thanks for watching, peace.